This lesson will investigate life history strategies of different organisms. Life histories are like a species summary. We're going to be looking at several life history strategies. Keep in mind that life histories are shaped by natural selection. Because of this, there is no one right answer to the way an organism lives and survives. Life histories are going to include a summary of information about an organism's reproductive strategies, how often they reproduce, when they reproduce in their lifetime, and their survivorship. Life history includes vital statistics of the species. This includes age of first reproduction, possibilities of survival and reproduction at each age, litter size and frequency, and longevity of the organism overall. There are many life history strategies. It's important to know that no one strategy is the perfect answer for every situation. There is a lot of variation because many strategies work in different conditions. If these strategies did not work, natural selection would work to weed them out and those organisms and species would go extinct. So there are many possible responses to the challenge of when to re reproduce, how often to reproduce, and how much to reproduce. So we are going to investigate some of the major strategies that are seen in nature. Life histories have to do with division of energy and trade-offs in an organism's life. Each animal has only so much energy to spend during its lifetime. In general, energy can be spent on reproduction, maintenance, or in growth. We can visualize an organism's energy using a pie chart. Each organism has only so much energy to spend. It has to divide its energy between reproduction, maintenance, and growth. Life is all about trade-offs. We're going to see that these different life history strategies divide up this pie chart in different ways. Reproductive investment is tricky business. Reproduction in general is expensive and risky. Whenever you reproduce, you often put yourself at risk of being found by predators. There's wear and tear on the body, or it can just be downright energetically expensive. Babies are expensive too. There are many materials needed to lay eggs, create babies, or to raise those babies after they're born. Organisms have to consider lifetime reproductive investment, not just event-by-event event situations. Remember, life's a game. Whoever has the most babies wins. These organisms want to pass on their genes as many times as possible. We're going to see that some organisms have a single episode of reproduction in their lifetime, while others have repeated episodes of reproduction throughout their lifetime. The first reproductive strategy we're going to look at is Big Bang Reproduction. When these animals reach sexual maturity, they are going to mate one time and put all of their energy into reproducing. At the end of their reproductive event, these animals will die. They put zero amount of energy into growth and maintenance for themselves. One example of Big Bang reproduction is the Antichinus. This type of mouse reaches sexual, sexual maturity about one year of age. They mate intensely for about three weeks, and then the males die shortly after mating. Females will bear their litters, wean them, and then they usually die right after the first litter is gone. The second life history strategy is fast, intensive reproductive investment. These animals reach sexual maturity at a fairly young age. They then produce many litters over a short time frame. A good example of this is the house mouse. These animals reach sexual maturity at about one month of age. They then reproduce frequently, producing litters of 6 to 10 offspring about every month. If we look at the overall lifespan of these mice, they don't live very long. They are putting some energy into maintenance of self so that they live past one reproductive event. But they are putting a lot of energy into each reproductive event, which is going to shorten their overall lifespan. The third reproductive strategy we're going to look at is slow, gradual reproductive investment. These animals tend to reach reproductive maturity at a much later age, 
and they produce fewer offspring at a time with larger gaps in between. Generally, they have a lot of time spent on each individual offspring to make sure that they reach maturity themselves. An example of this is seen in bats. Bats reach sexual maturity at about one year of age, and they produce small litters, usually one offspring per year. It takes a long time for that offspring to reach maturity and be weaned and go off on its own, especially compared to something like the mouse. These organisms are putting a lot of energy into maintenance for self and less energy into each reproductive event. This gives them a longer lifespan overall and more reproductive events. In general, these organisms may all produce the same number of offspring that survive to adulthood, no matter what their life history strategy. However, the investments and the strategy of getting to that end number is going to be different. Big Bang reproducers have two major phases during their lifetimes. During their early life, they split their energy between growth and maintenance. Later in life, they move into reproductive period. They spend a small amount of energy maintaining themselves just long enough to get to a nesting ground when they spend all of their energy on reproduction. Because these organisms have spent so little energy maintaining their self, they end up dying at the end of their reproductive cycle. Some organisms reproduce repeatedly throughout their lifetime, and they will have different strategies during different years. In these beech trees, we see a trade-off between reproduction and growth. Some years, these trees focus on growth. Most of their energy will put, be put towards growth. There is some put towards maintenance so that they can maintain normal functions. Very little of their energy is put towards reproduction during these years. Other times, these beech trees will focus on reproduction. During these years, most of their energy is put towards reproduction. Some is put towards maintenance. But very little of their energy is put towards growth. This means that growth rings on the trunk of the tree are small during these years, and the tree does not get much larger or taller during that time. Here's a practice problem. Salmon live most of their lives at sea and then return to their natal rivers and streams to reproduce and die. Which type of reproductive strategy does this exemplify? Take a minute, pause the video to figure this question out. The answer is Big Bang reproduction. These animals reproduce one time. They put all of their energy into that reproductive event and zero energy into maintenance. Therefore, after reproduction, those fish will die. Here's a practice question. Peacocks use their beautiful tails to attract mates. However, this beautiful tail affects its ability to evade predators. This is an example of which kind of evolutionary trade-off. Pause the video and take a moment to figure this out. The correct answer is reproduction and survival. The bigger and prettier the tail is, the more times this male will get to reproduce. However, the bigger and prettier the male is, the harder time he has in survival. It makes him more visible to predators. So he has to balance his energy between reproducing and spending energy to evade predators. Life histories are often figured out using life tables. A life table allows biologists to predict an individual's likelihood of either dying within a particular age interval or surviving the interval. This life table for these finches shows us that birds live to be up to 15 years old. We can measure a population following a specific cohort or group of birds that are the same age through their entire life to gather the data for this life table. We can count each number of bird that is alive during each interval. So. In this case, we see at zero years, there are 210 birds. The proportion of being alive is 100% or 1. Okay, during that first block of time, 0 to 3 years, we see that 140 deaths occurred. And the probability of dying during that interval was 67%. 
We do this throughout the bird's entire lifespan until all of the birds have passed away. This gives us a good idea of what is occurring in these life, birds' lives. Life tables are used to put together survivorship curves. Survivorship curves looks at the probability of surviving during the lifespan of an organism. There are three major patterns that we see in survivorship curves. Type 1 curves have a very high survivorship or survival rate during the lower parts of their lifespan, and it's not until old age where we see a steep drop-off. Humans, primates, elephants, and other large mammals often fall into the type 1 survivorship curve. Type 2 survivorship curves so it show a linear trend of decrease. It starts with a large number of individuals and they decrease or die off at a regular rate throughout their lifespan. Type 2 survivorship curves are often seen in medium-sized mammals such as rodents, many birds, and beavers. A type 3 survivorship curve starts with a large number of offspring, most of which who do not survive until adult adulthood. After that, we see a leveling off of the population, and most of the survivors will survive and live until old age. Type 3 curves are often seen in organisms such as oysters and insects. Here's another picture of the three survivorship curves. Turtles show a type 1 survivorship curve with high survivorship until old age and then rapid decrease as they get older. These kingfishers show a type 2 curve, which shows a steady decrease at a regular pace, a linear trend of decrease over time. Type 3 includes high mortality early in life, and those that survive can live to be very old. Mackerels are an example of a type 3 curve. Here's a practice problem. Polar bears are long-lived. They usually give birth to two cubs per litter every three years. Most cubs survive to adulthood. Which survivorship curve best describes polar bears? The correct answer is a type 1 curve. Polar bears have a high survival rate until old age when they drastically drop off. This lesson has investigated life history strategies and trade-offs in different organisms. Be sure to look over the learning objectives posted in Blackboard to help you study for this lesson.